Amen, amen. Glory be to the Son of God. Amen. Um, this morning we mentioned that because next week we have a week of Staruinta, today for both services, morning and afternoon, we want to talk about the time when the church of Jesus Christ was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And this is when the Lord started the church. And we said that Jesus, after he arose from the dead, he was here on earth for 40 days, talking to people, preaching the gospel, talking to his disciples. After 40 days, he ascended to heaven. Um, and after he ascended to heaven, that they waited another 10 days for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And this morning we talked about where they waited. Where did they wait? <clears throat> Tonight we want to continue and talk about how did they wait? How long did they wait? Obviously 10 days, but we'll go a little bit deeper into it for the meaning of that. <clears throat> and why did they have to wait? So how did they wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And this is a godly principle for anybody who is waiting for something from the Lord. Amen. If you are waiting for a promise that God made, it doesn't have to be necessarily the baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Any promise that God made to you, we have to look at how they waited for the promise of God and do the same. How did they wait? Acts chapter 1 and verse 14 tells us. And again, this is the godly principle of how you wait for a promise of God. They all joined together constantly in prayer. Constantly in prayer. Along with the women and Mary and the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. We talked this morning about this upper room, 120 people. Some of them were sisters, and it's mentioned, they mentioned Mary here, Mary the mother of Jesus. By the way, this is the last time we hear about Mary the mother of Jesus in the Bible. And Mary uh, was there for the birth of Christ and also for the birth of the church. And that's very important. So how did they wait for the promise of God? By praying. How did they wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit? By praying. Constantly in prayer. Persistently in prayer. All the time in prayer. Prayer was a big part of their church gathering. And that's a great and should be a great lesson for us. And it's exactly what we're going to be doing next week every night. Please don't miss next week every night. Make time to come to church and do what the church does. And that means praying. Amen. I know we're all busy. I know we got busy schedules. And I know we got busy afternoons. But we're going to wait for the promise of God. Some of us, all of us need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of us need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's a promise of God. But there may be other people who have other promises from God. How do you wait for the promise of God? Do what the disciples did. What did they do? How did they wait for the promise? They prayed continuously. You want to receive what God has promised you? Pray. That's what we learn, we're learning tonight. Prayer was a huge part of the church meetings and by the way prayer is not a sunday thing and prayer is not a one-time thing well i prayed once no it says here they prayed constantly constantly and when we talk about spiritual things brothers and sisters uh, don't ever be satisfied with the one time thing there's not a one-time thing in the spiritual things. You know, think about, you know, the receiving of Jesus. So let's talk about the receiving. Of, the receiving of Jesus is not a one-time thing. I know you received the Lord when you were saved and when you received salvation. And yes, when you get saved, you receive Jesus as your initial Savior. But there's a continual need to receive Jesus every day. Amen. 
One time is not enough. Oh, I received Jesus 35 years ago. Well, well it ain't enough. You got to receive Jesus every day, not for salvation. For salvation, you received him then. Why do you need to receive him every day now? For everything you're going through every day. So it's not, receiving Jesus is not a one-time thing. Come on. Same with the Holy Spirit. Because some of you are going to say, well, I received the Holy Spirit. Why do I have to come? Because receiving of Jesus is not a one-time thing. Receiving of the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing. There is an initial receiving of the Holy Spirit, but there is also a continuous need to receive the Holy Spirit every day. Can the church say amen? You need the Holy Spirit, brother, but I'm baptized. No, you need the Holy Spirit, brother, but I'm filled. You need the Holy Spirit, brother, about 20 years ago. No, you need the Holy Spirit. So make time next week to come and pray with us. They were praying. Luke chapter 3 and verse 21 says when all the people were baptized jesus was baptized too and watch and he says and as he was praying heaven was open as he was praying some of us want to i mean heaven opens when you pray I mean, Jesus here, I mean, you would think heaven is always open for Jesus. But as they were praying, heaven opened. Do you want to see heaven open on your behalf? You need to pray. As they were praying, heaven was open. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. Acts 4, 31. After they prayed. I'm going to repeat that because that's important. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. When? After they prayed, the place was shaken. After they prayed, they received the Holy Spirit. So many of us want some things to be shaken in your life. Maybe at your job, maybe in your family. You want God to start moving. You want God to come and shake some things in your life, change some things in your life. Well, it happened, and it can happen if you pray. After they pray, the place was shaken. That's how they waited for the promise. of. If you have a promise from God, how do you wait for that promise? Praying continuously. Amen. Now, let's move on. Next question. How long did they wait? So we said Jesus was here for 40 days, talking to people, preaching the gospel, talking to his disciples. 40 days after, he goes to heaven. But then he tells them for 10 days, they had to wait for the promise of the Spirit. So 10 days. How long they waited? 10 days. Now, um, why 10 days? You know, number 10 is a very interesting and important number in the Bible. Let me give you a few examples. God asks us for 10% of everything he gives us to give back to him. So that's number 10, 10%. In the Bible, God gave Moses how many commandments? Come on, fun father. 10. Here we go, number 10. The most popular number in the book of Numbers is number 10. Over and over and over, you're going to read this number in the book of Numbers. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 1. The kingdom of heaven will, like, will be like 10 virgins who, look, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Again, 10. Matthew chapter 25, we read that the master gave his servant ten talents. Luke chapter 15, a woman, a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Again, number ten. Luke chapter 17, Jesus was going into a village and ten men who had leprosy met him. He heals them and you know the story, only one of them comes back to thank him. Again, number ten. Number ten is important. Ten, ten, ten. You're going to see it many times, in number, even in Romania, number ten is an important number. You know that in Romanian, by the way, every number from 10 to 20 has number 10 in it. 11, 
10, 2 spre 10, 3 spre 10, 9 spre 10. So now I'm a 10 is an important number. In Romania, we, we, we liked it when we got a 10 la școală. Some of you young people don't know what 10 means. We were happy, man. When we saw number 10, brother, come on. Number 10, number 10. So why wait 10 days? What's, why 10? By the way, they didn't know, they didn't know how long they're going to have to wait. Jesus said, wait, but they didn't know how long. Is it going to be a day? Is it going to be five minutes? Is it going to be two days? Is it going to be six days? Is it going to be two months? They didn't know. It was 10 days. So why is number 10? Why, number, why 10 days important? Why is waiting important? Well, number one is preparation. Preparation, pregatire. God didn't give him the Holy Spirit the first day. Why? Preparation. When they received the Holy Spirit of God, God was giving them a promise. But sometimes God will make you wait for a promise. He will promise it and then make, I wish he didn't make us wait. But he would tell him ahead of time, because, you know, if you know you're going to give me something next year, God, don't tell me this year and make me wait for a year, right? He would say, just tell me a day before. Why would you tell me, I mean, you tell Abraham he's going to have a son. I mean, just tell him, you know, the year before. Why you make him wait all these years? Preparation. Pregatire. Because sometimes he makes you wait because you're not ready to receive the promise. And he has to prepare you. Preparation, pregătire. Number two, appreciation, prețuire. Appreciation. When you get the promise of God and you waited for it a little longer and it was not as easy to get it. Come on, somebody. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to treasure it more. You're going to appreciate it more. Right? So they have to wait for it a little bit. You don't get it. It's not that easy to get it. Preparation, pregătire, appreciation, prețuire. Number three, education. Preparation, appreciation, education, educare. Receiving anything from God has to do with faith. And he has to teach us that, you know, every, listen, everything we get from God, we get it in his timing, not our timing. Somebody said that God owns everything except a watch. Uh, but he's never late. So he doesn't have a watch, but he's never late. But, but see, he doesn't come according to your watch. Because <laughs> sometimes you go, God, I mean, what's going on? Come on. So he makes you wait. He makes them wait. In this particular case, it was 10 days. But we're talking about the principle overall. Because waiting can be sometimes 10 minutes. Sometimes it can be 10 years. Maybe God has promised you something for 10 years, and you haven't received it yet. He's preparing you. Pre preparation, appreciation, education. He wants to tell you that he's in control. And when you're ready, he will do it for you. Lastly, we want to talk about the last question. Why did they have to wait? So we talked about where did they wait this morning. We talked about the fact they waited in the house and at the temple, not just in the house and not just at the temple. Church was both the temple and the house. That's where they waited. How they waited, we talked about it today, constant prayer. Waiting doesn't mean, you know, I'm just going to wait. No, 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 you pray waiting. That's how they waited, how long they waited, 10 days in this particular case. But waiting has a purpose, and we talked about that. And lastly, why did they have to wait? And we partially talked about this, but I want to just say one more thing before I close. Um, <clears throat> why did they have to wait? Waiting for the power of the Holy Spirit was absolutely necessary. Um, if I were to ask you tonight, what were the last words of Jesus Christ here on earth? Most of the people will say the last words of Jesus here on earth was the uh, Great Commission. We all know it, right? Go into all the earth, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to 
keep my commandments. So this is the great commission to go in all the world. And we find this in the book of Matthew and the book of Mark. These are the last words of Jesus. So the last words of Jesus according to uh, Matthew and according to Mark and according to uh, other than most Baptists, uh, trust me, I went to a Baptist uh, institute, and I know, was th were these words. The last words of Jesus was, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Um, however, according to the book of Luke and the book of Acts, the last words of Jesus was not the commandment to go. Some people say, well, last words of Jesus was go into all the world. Well, Luke and the book of Acts, and according to all Pentecostals, the last words of Jesus were not go, but actually stay. So we talked about that when Jesus went up to heaven, he, he told his disciples to do something. What did he tell them to do? He told them to stay. If we read the last chapter in the book of Luke, or Acts chapter 1, the last words of Jesus would not go, but actually stay. Stay and wait until you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to wait. Jesus said, you have to be, you have to stay. Yeah, you have to go, but before you go, you have to stay and wait. Because if you go before you have received the Holy Spirit, nothing is going to happen. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Let me read it to you. Luke 24, 49. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, promised but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. So we all know that usually when people die, now Jesus is not dying here, but usually when people die, they tell the most important things. I don't know if you were ever there next to somebody who dies. I mean, people right before they die, they will tell you secrets. They will tell you where the money is. They will tell you where the cash is. They will tell you the passwords. They will tell you secrets they never told anybody before. They, the most important things people will say right before they, they depart from this world. Now, in this passage, Jesus is not dying. Jesus is going to heaven. And the last words of Jesus were not go. And Jesus is telling us here something important. The most important thing, he says, stay and wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How do you wait? Pray for it continuously. Because if you don't get it, and if you don't stay, nothing will happen. You will have no power. In Acts chapter 1, we're not going to read the passage, but he said the same thing. Jesus said, you need the power from on high. Now, in closing, I want to say, you know, if you remember John chapter 14, we're not going to read the passage, but it's about the communion, the Last Supper. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he said something very important. He said, before long, you will see me no more, because I'm going to my Father in heaven. But when I go up and you don't see me anymore, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So what does that mean? I mean, I'm going away and you're not going to see me, but I will come to you. And he says, when I go up, I will ask my father and he will give you another comforter to help you and be with you forever. The Holy Spirit of truth. So Jesus said, very soon you're not going to see me. I'm going to the Father. But don't be upset. Don't be sad. When I go to the Father, I'm going to come back to you. How am I going to come back to you? I'm going to ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because he neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. What does this all mean? At the Last Supper, Jesus was saying to his disciples, I am going away, but somebody else is coming. I'm going away. You won't see me anymore, 
but I'm coming back. Um, he says, when I go, somebody else is coming, and this means you need to say goodbye to me. I was physically with you for three and a half years, and I'm about to leave, and you need to say goodbye to me, but somebody else is coming. You need to say goodbye to me, but you need to say hello to somebody else. The Holy Spirit of God. Now, listen, I am not saying we need to say goodbye to Jesus, even though here, I mean, Jesus was on earth physically with them at a time, at that time, but Jesus left and someone else already came. So, but, but don't get me wrong, I am not saying you need to say goodbye to Jesus, but that's what Jesus said. I'm going away and you need to say hello to somebody else. And I believe that many Christians in our days today need to say hello to the Holy Spirit. Need to say, welcome, Holy Spirit. I know we got Jesus, but he's, not, he's no longer physically with us. So he says, I'm going to go away and you won't see me, but I'm coming back. But I'm not coming back as you think. I'm sending somebody else who's also part of us. The Holy Spirit and you, you need to say welcome Holy Spirit that's exactly what we're gonna do here next week every night come to prayer every night and let's welcome the Holy Spirit amen welcome the Holy Spirit in your heart welcome the Holy Spirit in your family welcome the Holy Spirit in your life it is not a one-time thing you're going to say, brother, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Just still come. It's not a one-time thing. Uh, it's an everyday thing. It's a Monday thing, tomorrow, Tuesday thing, day after tomorrow, every day of the week. We need to say, welcome, Holy Spirit, the presence of God. I really believe he's, he's going to be here with us give us victory over many things if any of you is waiting for a promise from God whatever that is do what these disciples did they waited how did they wait it praying continuously amen